Hi, everyone. How are you? I hope you're doing great. Hope you're enjoying your summer and the heat. Ugh. I'm already sick of the heat. Sick of it, I tell you. Sick of it. So, anywho, I was watching my idol, Nancy Grace, and she had a bombshell tonight. She got me thinking, okay? So, Nanners was saying this. She said that they found out that Koberger, Brian Koberger, you know, from the Idaho murders, the one who is suspected in being the one responsible for the um, horrible massacre of four amazing young college kids. And he was studying for his PhD. So he was there with the students. He very much was on campus and he had uh, applied for the police department. For whatever reason, he didn't get hired on. Now, one of the things that has came out is that he was spying on his colleague. So Nanner said that essentially, Koberger set up a scenario where he allegedly went into his colleague's home and moved something. Just enough that the colleague was spooked. And so, lo and behold, she went to her colleague, Brian Koberger, and was like, I don't know, I'm kind of afraid something was moved. I think that somebody was in my house. Something to that effect, right? And here he comes because, you know, he's Captain save -ho, Captain save -ho Koberger. And he's like, oh, no, let me help you. you. You have a right to be scared. I'd be scared, too. Why don't I come over and install a security system for you? And so he did. And what they think is that he set the whole thing up, you know, just met methodically did this, got into her brain, got her to come to him for comfort. And he came around, Captain Savaho puts in this system for her. And they figure that then he was able to watch her wherever he put the little cameras in her home. Okay. And they also said in there too, as a reminder, to always cover your webcam in your laptop or your computer or whatever, you know, your whatever else you, attachment you have that somebody can see you. I have a post-it note on mine right now because, I mean, after I heard Nanners talking about that, I'm like, good Lord, I got to go put something on there in case somebody's trying to pipe in and look at me. So they figure he was doing that. Well, then the person who lived behind the house where the horrible massacre occurred came back home from a vacation and must have left her suitcase in the car for whatever reason well her underwear was missing from the suitcase she found her underwear in her cup holder in her car so they figure it was him now, I need your guys' help because I remember something. Wasn't it Zana's dad who did something? Did he put in another lock on that slider door? Did he put a lock on the window? He did something because there was some kind of security issue. And we know that there had been a lot of car burglaries in the area. Are they linked to him? We don't know. But I remember, I thought Zana... Zana's family had said, Zana's friends had said something about there had been something. I, and I, I remember the dad was over just that weekend fixing something. You guys will have to remind me. Did he change the lock on the back patio door? What did he do? So was Brian doing things there too that they were noticing that, okay, this is weird. This shouldn't be here. Um, my panty drawer has been rifled through. Or worse, was he going in there as their friend or whatever, or going in there clandestine, sneaking in, 
And did he put a security thing in there? Was he watching them? And then I got to thinking, what if he filmed himself doing what he did? Because then he would have watched it over and over and over again as he watched the whole nation searching for who could have done something so atrocious. As Nancy Grace said, one of the first things he said to his defense attorney is, um, can you can you get my TV? Can you get my TV out of there? So um, her guest said that they probably did get the TV, but they um, put a memory stick in to see, you know, what he had on that TV. What, what was it about that TV that, you know, he wanted to make sure that uh, his defense had? Was there footage of his colleague? Was there footage of the Idaho Four? Was there footage of the unthinkable? Really makes you think. And Nancy Grace and her guest, her guest was a specialist in behavioral um, studies. And he was talking about the different kinds of killers and how Koberger is that helper kind, very much like Ted Bundy was they use that as an example too where you know he played the part of this guy you know who who needed help getting his groceries in the in the back of the vehicle and then you know when the you know the nice sweet girl with brown hair parted down the middle would help and you know bend her head into the car then he'd whack her over the head with his cast and go and do whatever he did well, this is what Brian Koberger was doing. He was he was doing that that thing too, where he was acting like the one that you would go to when you had a problem, setting it up like that to his colleague. Is that just diabolical? I mean, the things that you you just look at him and you can tell that there's a million things going on in his mind. You just look at his eyes and you, like you see like a computer crashing numbers. You know what I mean? Like those old Commodore sixty fours sitting there crashing the numbers. I mean, he is a one piece of work. And as he was so into talking about where phones ping, that's what he applied for. When he applied to be in law enforcement, he wanted to bring that technology there. He wanted to explain to them how to solve crimes based on where cell phones ping and how they ping. So he knew what he was doing. He knew. And that's probably why he turned his phone off in those other areas when they've reported um, all of the phone history that they have and they can show that, okay, this is where he was here, this is where he was here, but then the phone was off. He didn't take his phone in by all accounts it was off in his vehicle. But he had a permissible purpose on campus as he worked on campus and was a student. So as the Idaho 4 home was right across the street from campus, if it pings there, you could say he was there at school grabbing papers to grade them. And he was so into the the point of where he wanted to know how people felt after they committed a crime. That was a question that he would ask and and pose that question as he was grading papers and he was being a TA. He wanted to know if, if people had, had done things and, and how they felt afterwards. I think he was really thinking about and planning this and just really trying to get in that mindset of what would he feel like afterwards? Would he be able to blend in like he did? How would he feel inside? I just, I don't think that this was his first, well, obviously there's four. I don't think it was his first one. I really don't. I think that they're going to find that there was other things happening in the area. They're going to connect it. Could be his first time, but for the limited amount of time, I mean, what's it down to, you know, under 30 minutes, definitely. More like the 17 minutes and killing four able-bodied college students, four, by himself. I don't believe there was an accomplice. But all of this is just so 
you just like to believe that people around you are good and mostly good and to know that somebody was just really playing with somebody's mind like this and and like like Nancy Grace said that woman should be thanking her lucky stars that she's alive because he was probably getting ready to or she would have been his first kill if it was first I don't know let me know in the comments what you think do you think this was his first massacre do you think it was his first kill and if you remember um, what it was, was it Xana's dad fixed the door, fixed the window? Do you remember what that is? I can't think of that right now. But I just got to, I got to thinking about this, and I wanted to share this with you. I wonder what you guys are thinking, too. So thanks for listening, as always, and have a great day.